if you're writing the topic of today is who does God use? As a matter of fact, we must agree that God can and will use anyone. Praise the Lord. That is where I want us to start. Today I'm not seeing the clock, so it means we can be here up to four. <laughs> is it? Yes, I, I, I can see it. Thank God. Don't be worried. So, let us do some definitions first. I just said God can use anyone and will use anyone. Praise the Lord. That is the very basic level I want us to start from. Our main scriptures, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. I want someone to read from the congregation. If you're there, please. You can even use, you, you can read from the screen here. Now in a large house, there are not only gold and silver bowls, but also those of wood and earthenware, some of, for special use, some for ordinary. Some, so, if anyone purifies himself from these things, he will be a special instrument, set apart, useful for, to the master, prepared for every good work. Praise the Lord. He will serve as a vessel of honor. Or some version says as a vessel for honor. I want us to mark that, uh, that scripture. Our second scripture that is the main scripture today is Mark, also project it. <coughs> Mark chapter 16 from verses 17 to 18. We can have a gentleman read for us. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. Thank you so much. My brother sounds... You, you've not completed, have you? They will pick up snakes. Yes. If they should drink anything deadly, mm. it will never harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will get well. Amen. <coughs> I thank God because we have uh, Museveni himself here. <laughs> my brother, God bless you. <laughs> Many countries are represented here, my brothers. That is our brother, Museveni himself. <laughs> now, <coughs> in the topic today we have different words. I want us to have these words and def define them just for the purposes of definition. To use. Praise the Lord. What is to use? As a noun, to use is the action of using something. I, I laughed when I saw the, them using, using to, to define use. The action of using something or the state of being used for a purpose. Praise the Lord. The action, that is a, to, to use as a noun, is the action of using something, and I want to say slash, somebody or someone, praise the Lord, or the state of being used for a purpose. I also want us to mark the word purpose. Now, this word can also be used as a verb, praise the Lord. As a word, uh, as a verb, oh, verb, I think in primary, primary four, five, we are told verb is a doing word. Praise the Lord. Now, to use as a verb <coughs> is to take, I want us to, I think I'm very particular on how, how I'm mentioning those words. Take, hold, or deploy. Praise the Lord. You take, or you can hold, or you can deploy. Deploy is like send at somewhere, someone somewhere, right? Deploy as a means of accomplishing or achieving result. Take note of the word result. 
Praise the Lord. It means you can use you cannot use the word use if you do not have a purpose. Neither can you use the word use if you do not want to achieve a result. Praise the Lord. I'll repeat again for those who are writing. To take, to hold, or deploy something slash someone or somebody as a, mean, as a means of accomplishing or achieving something or a uh, result. Sorry. Praise the Lord. Now, it means that the word use is a working word. It is not an idle word. It is a word that if it is in a sentence, it means some action. Praise the Lord. It cannot be in a sentence and it is idle, like a silent word. No. Use is an active, actionable word. Praise the Lord. And that is why I also want us to have a look at what the definition of work means. Because we have seen to use is to use to do something, right? That means there's some action, there's some work. So let's see. Work as a noun. And uh, in the intervals, you'll be allowing me to sip, uh, to sip my water. I hope I will not be inconveniencing you. Work as a noun <coughs> is activity... I also, also, also want us to be very uh, particular here. Activity involving mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose. Again, the word purpose is, is repeated. It means, oh, let me just repeat that. Activity involving mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result. Praise the Lord. I love it when they, when they repeat purpose and result. Praise the Lord. Now, work is also a verb. It's a doing word. And work as a verb means be engaged in physical or mental activity in order to achieve result. Praise the Lord. It means, just like use, work cannot be in a sentence and it is idle. If work appears in a sentence, there is some action. Praise the Lord. Actually, it is do work. You do work. So it's action. It's pure action. Now, what is work of God? We have seen work. Praise the Lord. Now, let us narrow it down to work of God. What is work of God? Because if God is going to use you, he's going, going to use you to do some work. Praise the Lord. And it is not just any other work. It is work of God. We, when we were young, and I think this, this is a song that transcends all generations, including grandpa, is a, is a Swahili song, grandpa. It says, Akinita taitika Nitafanya Kazi ya buwana Nitafanya When he calls me Yes, grandpa now, there you are. Grandpa and uh, Temi, if, if Temi is there, and Anna, it, it is, when he calls me I will answer when he calls me. I will answer when he calls me. I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my God. Praise the Lord. It is important for us to differentiate between ordinary work and work of God. So I want us to see, what is work of God? Here is my definition. Any work that aligns with God's will, praise the Lord, 
is God's work. Bode yeso sifiwe. Any work that aligns with God's will is God's work. And I add, any work that serves others' benefit, praise the Lord. Any work that serves others, oh sorry, that serves others and benefits humankind is God's work. Praise the Lord. If the work reflects a desire to do good and be useful, it's God's work. Praise the Lord. I repeat again. Any work that aligns with God's will is God's work. Praise the Lord. That means it is important for believers, them that have been called by the name of God, to first know the will of God before you start working. Praise the Lord. I'm just saying, do not place work then will. No. It is God's will, then you step into work. And we know work is being used. Praise the Lord. I also want to confess. And this confession comes from Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8. Isaiah 40 verse 8. And 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 24. Actually, I think Peter borrows it from Isaiah. Isaiah 40 verse 8. And uh, 1 Peter 1.24. I want to request uh, John Ouko. For those who do not know, John Ouko has known me for almost half of my life. He, I, I thought about it today and I got shocked. To read Isaiah 40. He, he has known me for half of, my, uh, half of my life. And I'm not young. I'm just small. I'm not young. Uh, John, Isaiah 40 verse 8. Praise, praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, so Isaiah 40 from verse 8 up to what point? <laughs> I, I knew you'd ask that question. <laughs> Just verse 8. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so Isaiah 40 verse 8 in IV. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Praise the Lord. Every single human being that is the point I'm getting from this verse. I don't know which version Oka has used. That is an IV, right? I will pardon him. Someone read First Peter verse, verse one, chapter one, verse twenty-four. Uh, different from an IV. This I'm looking for. Sp I'm very particular with the words. This one, this one is H HCSB. No, let me read from my version. It says, "Every single human being is like grass." Praise the Lord. We are mortals. Now, I just wanted to, 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 to lay these facts before us before we proceed. That we human, humans are like grass. We are here today, not there tomorrow, praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, we are mortals. Our lives are squarely, that's what, I wanted that one. Can you get a version that speaks like mine? Our lives are squarely in the hands of God. Squarely. Praise the Lord. It means our lives are fully, totally, completely in the hands of God. Praise the Lord. Now, that will make you understand when I said that God can use anyone and will use anyone. I dare say, whether born again or not, praise the Lord. Because God, and you, if you put God here and human beings here, dot, here. Human beings are like any other vessel in the hands of God, praise the Lord. And that is why. Let me just kidogo deviate a bit. 
That is why Cyrus, the king, you remember Cyrus? Was greatly used by God after Nebuchadnezzar had messed up Israel. Praise the Lord. And again, that is why Pharaoh, who was a pagan, praise the Lord, was used to demonstrate. Now, God can use it for anything. Was used to demonstrate the power of God. Praise the Lord. Now, that tells you whether you are born again or not, you are squarely in the hands of God. Praise the Lord. Now, we believers, we are not just squarely in the hands of God, but the Bible says elsewhere that in the bosom of Abraham. Now, now that makes it a bit special. Praise the Lord. People can be used in different ways. No, let me not go ahead of myself. Let me say this <clears throat> before I get there. One way or the other, whether we know it or not, we are being used somewhere. Praise the Lord. Whether you are here and you're not very sure whether you are being used as a matter of fact, you are being used somewhere. It is either in the house and the vineyard of the Lord or outside elsewhere. Praise the Lord. When in 1997, I was brought up in uh, Kakamega, Western, Kwahumundu, Humundu, Obusuma. In 1997, there was a story. I'm not sure because I've, I never met the guy. There's a story that there's a man who fell from nowhere to a crusade where, where bishops were holding crusade. That guy is called Pastor Muli. I've, I've not met him personally. But that story was there in 1997-1999. Though my mother told me he was in that, she was there. So I, I believed when she said... I saw the man. I said, Sour. It, it, it happened. No, you know, my, father got, my mother got born again many years ago. So I just believed her. Because I knew my mother can't lie. Especially to me. Now, that man said, after he had, he had been delivered, he was being used as an agent of the, of the devil. He said, even the devil instructs and sends people to do his bid. That, uh, I was saying that because I wanted you to know that whether you know it or not, you are being used. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Whether you are innocent or as guilty as who? Who is that? Who is that? Who is very guilty here? No, <laughs> not here. <clears throat> whether you are so innocent about it or you are so ignorant of the fact that you are being used, the fact remains you are being used somewhere. And somehow, praise the Lord, somehow you're being used. Where is the question? Where are you being used? Praise the Lord. I want us to see these scriptures that we have today. I want us to go through these scriptures, <coughs> even as we proceed. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. These scriptures are rich. Praise the Lord. They are rich. The Apostle Paul starts by saying, Now, in a large house, praise the Lord, he does not say, Now, in a house, no. And I think, I think he was as specific as I, as I am. He says, Now, in a large, I dare say, in a large house, there are not only vessels and objects of gold and silver, praise the Lord, but also vessels and objects of wood and earthenware. And some are for honorable and noble good use. Please take note of how I've placed them. Eh? Honorable, noble, 
good use and some for dishonorable ignoble or if i was in class 6 and i'm learning english, english i would say ignoble common use verse 21 says therefore if anyone cleanses himself anyone i think that is the key word for me therefore if anyone cleanses himself from these things of course we must ask ourselves what are those things if anyone cleanses himself from these things it says those things which are dishonorable those things that are sinful those things that are, that are disobedient kind of those things that are unclean praise the lord he says if anyone cleanses himself from them he will be he will be he will be means he will become it means he was not but he is being made to he will praise the lord to become means you are not but now you are praise the lord he says he will be a vessel uh, he will be a vessel for honor sanctified that is set apart for a special purpose useful to the master you you, you understand the word purpose when we read in the definition of use right set apart for a special purpose useful to the master prepared for good work that's why i also gave the definition of work because use and work they go together praise jesus now what is the apostle saying <laughs> In these verses, praise the Lord. We'll come to that verse again. Hold it. Just hold it there. I want us to assume we are proceeding from Second Timothy. Then we just flow with that. Let's assume that Mark is part of Timothy, right? That Mark 16. You see it? So I want us to proceed. Second Timothy 21 says, he will be a vessel of, uh, for honor, sanctified, set apart for a special purpose, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Amen? Then now let's flow. Mark 16, verse 17 says, uh, and I'm, I'm, I want to assume it's continuous. Please, assume with me. These signs. So he says in 21 that he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. And then he says, these signs will accompany those who have believed. Praise the Lord. Remember in verse 21 of 2 second, of second Timothy he says, therefore if anyone cleanses, in Mark he says, these signs will accompany those who have believed. Cleansing, believing. Take note of those words. Not just believing, but he says, if they believe in him, that is Christ Jesus, because these are utterances of Christ Jesus, in my name, they will cast out demons. Praise the Lord. You see works? I'm counting them here. And I know there are more. By the way, let me say, these works here in Mark, they're not limited. Praise the Lord. Uh, you, you'll see an extension of them. It, it says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if or when... Praise the Lord. They drink any deadly poison. It will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. So I, I believe you've assumed with me that it's a continuous scripture from Timothy to Mark. Now you see what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing? That if one has set, cleansed himself and believed, then in Jesus' name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and they will drink anything deadly it will not hurt them if they cleanse. And it is anyone who cleanses himself. Now, let us be very clear that God is not interested in what we have accomplished as humans. Praise the Lord. No, he is not. He will never be interested 
in your own accomplishments as human. Now, maybe you attended a school like mine, Nyadi, uh, Nyadi Primary School. <laughs> you see, I have a problem, bring it out. <laughs> and that's why I'm taking water. <laughs> but before I went to Nyadi Primary School, I was in Buhulunya. <laughs> no, I'm not guessing those words are they're actually true. Buhulunya Primary School. Next to Kakamega High School. That is where Buhulunya. Buhulunya. Hey. <laughs> so maybe you're like myself. You went to school and Tinyende. <laughs> Elvin, you know Tinyende. Jigas. Jigas worked on you the way they worked on me. On brown red soil. No, it's red soil. Maybe you are not a CEO anywhere. No, not leave alone a CEO. <laughs> Maybe you are not even a messenger. Anywhere. Forget about CEO. Praise the Lord. Maybe you have not even written the what best selling? They're called best selling books. You've never even written a paragraph. The last time you wrote was composition. And of course we know you were 0203 out of 40. Maybe you are that person. Maybe you do not sit on boards. You know the way they say the board of Ketraco, KPLC board, uh, JQuat board. You, even the board in your home, you don't know if there's a board. It's okay. I'm saying God is not interested. Praise the Lord. Maybe when people speak about, I have a dream, I have a dream. <laughs> You're wondering, what are they dreaming? <laughs> Maybe you have never dreamt about an idea. Idea, you know. When I was in campus, uh, I, I did computer science. When I was in campus, I, I, I had an idea of developing an application. I, I, I know my husband understands this. An application, because a classmate of mine died because of blood cancer uh, when I was in second year. So I said, I must develop an idea came. I must develop apl an application, which will connect the entire Kenya such that if someone, someone is in need of blood, they just go to the application and the big notification, and anyone who wants to donate, blood group O, blood group B, you just see it, you go and donate. It failed. Yes, it failed. So maybe you're there and you've never dreamed about those things. No, maybe you dream and they fail. It's still okay. God is not interested. Praise the Lord. Maybe you're not, you, we just hear a, a honorary, honor, honorary doctorate. What, are they, what is that thing called? You, People, like the one, the one they give Raila, the one they give Uru, the one they give Ruto, those honor, honor. <laughs> yes, that one. It is honorary. Hey. English is not easy. So maybe you've never, nobody has ever conferred such things on you. Praise the Lord. Maybe you're not even a, a, a rising star. You know the way they say, this one is a rising star. This one is going far. But you, when they see you, they say, where is he going? Where is he going? Maybe you're such a person. Praise the Lord. Mm, very interesting. God is just not interested in those ones. When he wants to use you, those things are mentioned. He is not interested. Praise the Lord. Like Aoko mentioned here, people want, people, people want to drive, a, 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 you, you have just been employed and you want to drive a, the same, what is it called? V, V8. No. Mao said you have the right one. Which one is that? CRV. You see that? It, 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 that's like a Luo, a Luo vehicle. CRV. <laughs> now, <laughs> maybe you've never even dreamt of having a bicycle. Leave alone CRV. It sounds like CRE. Those... It, it doesn't matter. That is what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Maybe you are here and everyone has been looking down upon you in your entire life. I hear people praying for spirit of rejection. They have prayed for you. For you, you've been rejected. They have prayed. You've been rejected. Praise. I don't know if you've seen those people. I see people who have prayed for spirit of rejection. 
And I, I believe it's true that you should be prayed for and delivered from such spirit. But I'm saying, you as you don't know what is happening because they have delivered you from rejection, but that is why you still dwell. Praise the Lord. I'm saying, God can use you, and that rejection becomes a, becomes a past, past tense. Yes, praise the Lord. It does not matter if they have rejected you, whatever they have rejected you. Our God, who is saying that if anyone, you who, are, who has been rejected, you who maybe at, at one point you are at the brink of committing suicide, praise the Lord. I mean, you just simply gave up with life. Our God is saying in 2 Timothy that if you, anyone, you included, cleanses themselves, then God will use you. And he won't just use you as a vessel. He says, as a vessel of honor. Special. Praise the Lord. Not ordinary. Now, let me tell you what, what, what special means. Now, in a big or a large house, the house here is the visible church. Church. Praise the Lord. Let me dare say, it is Christianity. Large. Yes, it's church. So the Lord is saying in 2 Timothy, now as we go into the scriptures, in a large house, so I dare say, in the church, praise the Lord, there are not only vessels and objects of gold and silver in the church. Praise the Lord. He goes ahead to say, but also vessels and objects of wood and earthenware. Take note. Gold is not just gold. Gold does not just become gold. Gold goes through a process of refining. Praise the Lord. And by the time you have it, it is, and I believe, the Lord is speaking about refined gold. He's saying any traces of taint in the gold has been removed. There's a name they call it in, in chemistry. Joel, you are a chemist. What are they, what are they called in, in English? Impurities. You said the English is not easy. Impurities. This gold here, it is gold that has been refined and every impu impurity, not impunity, every impurities have been removed. It is fine, pure gold. Not just gold, not the one that Raila is selling, no. Not, not the one that, not the one that, uh, now who is selling the, those things? Not those ones. It is pure refined gold, not padlocks. They were selling padlocks as gold. Not those ones. <clears throat> but in the same house, where there is gold and silver, it gave me the picture of the Temple of Solomon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, let me bring it close. There are certain vessels that were only found in the inner chamber. Not the common place. Not the common courts. If you, if you picture the, the Temple of Solomon. Certain objects, of course, made of gold, were found in the inner chamber of the temple. Praise the Lord. You also understand that in a serious dinner party, Pastor, like the one uh, we, we had with uh, uh, where are the Colivers. Yes, you, see that, you saw that dinner party with the Colivers. I, I know they're here, Gerald and his wife. In such a serious party, <laughs> I will let you come with your matope. Uh, oh, sorry. You don't bring cups made of clay and wood. Uh, uh, what? Uh, sorry. Guards, guards, they are called guards. You don't bring guards in such ceremonies. No, you can't. How? <laughs> to make matters worse, you cannot use cups made of clay and uh, guard, wood, 
to serve the high table. No, you can't. It doesn't work like, like that. The Lord is saying, if you cleanse yourself and you are made as gold and silver, you will be used in the inner chamber. Praise the Lord. Now, for every believer who has gone through the scriptures, you know that when the Lord Jesus gave up his spirit, what happened? The curtain that was dividing these two inner chamber of the Holy of Holies and the common chamber was torn into two. Praise the Lord. It simply means that anyone who has believed, Mark, anyone who has believed should and must enter the inner chamber to be used. Praise the Lord. I think I'll revisit that later. Let's see this bad. But it's not, it's not always, but it's not a good thing. Oh, that is 11. 11, 10. I'll ask, I'll ask the person, don't always ask innocently. <coughs> <laughs> Very innocently. <coughs> mm. I don't want to say the way you s we used to say in high school. That you must obey the Holy Spirit the way he is using me with the time. <laughs> no. <coughs> it says, but also, now, it's very interesting, that in the same house, where there are certain vessels of honor like gold and silver, there are also a place where you find clay, wood, and earthenware. Oh, clay and, and earthenware, I think, are the same thing. Now, take note that clay breaks easily. It is fragile. I dare say clay is not mature to be used in the inner chamber. No, you cannot serve the king and the, the clay is breaking. You, 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 no, it can't happen. Praise the Lord. Wood is not good enough. It's not mature enough to be used in the inner chamber. And I'm saying believers who have cleansed themselves are in the inner chamber. If you are still on the common chamber, actually my Bible says, uh, but also vessels of object, uh, of wood and earthenware and some for uh, honorable, noble good use and some for dishonorable, ignoble, Common use. Common use. No, I'm saying you are still in the, in the large house, but you are used for common, ordinary, uh, ignoble. And remember, ignoble and dishonorable, it means even the devil might be using you in the church. No, I'm saying as a matter of fact. If you are being used in the large house for dishonorable things, what are you doing? It's not the, that is the wheat. That the Lord Jesus is speaking about, the wheat that wants to grow together with uh, the chaff, not wheat, they are called tear, something, that wants to grow with the wheat in the church, they are there. No, there's no, there's no way you'd be used for dishonorable, that is the devil trying to use you somehow in the, in the house. Take note that before verse 20, Paul is speaking about Himenaeus, what is his name again? That name gave me a difficult time. Let's see what this, this guy was doing in the large house, this guy was in the large house. Wait, wait. Second Timothy come from verse 18. Oh, we start from 17. Elvina, you are there? Let, let, let's beat time. Give him micro the microphone. Elvina is, is there. Start from 17. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hermanias and Philetus who yeah, have wandered away from the truth. I, I wish I would hold you the way Luo pictures hold people. Shkiliapo. <laughs> Himenaeus, what, is that the name again? Hymen, Hy, whatever. Himenis. <laughs> <laughs> that is him, so Himenis. Himenaeus <laughs> was in the large house. That is what I'm, I'm passing across. 
that we have people in the large house, the church, who can be used for dishonorable things. Dishonorable things are things that bring shame. If you didn't know, now you know. Praise the Lord. Now, if you're being used for ignoble things, it simply means you're being used for things that are a bit shameful. And that can only be the devil. And that is where also false teachers fall. Praise the Lord. I love verse 21 of this Second Timothy. Therefore, we have seen 20. 21 says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, Cleanse yourself from unclean things. Yes, you are in the large house, you are in the church. Come to your senses and cleanse yourself from these things or else you will be used for, for dishonorable things. For shameful things. To bring shame to the body of Christ. Like he many us. I, please, just find your own pronunciation of that name. If anyone cleanses himself, he'll be used uh, uh, himself from these things. Uh, he'll be used as a vessel for honor. So I'm saying this. You have come to your senses and realized that you are being used for ignoble things, for common things. And I said, whether you know it or not, you're being used. Now, Paul is calling us to cleansing now, if you hear the call to cleanse or to be cleansed, then the Bible through the Apostle Paul and the Holy Spirit says, you will still be used as a vessel of honor. Not just honor, you who are being used for dishonorable things will be sanctified. That is not, those are not my words. He says, he will be used as a vessel of honor, sanctified. Now, I dare say, set apart for special use. Praise the Lord. So maybe previously you've been used for dishonorable common things. But you're following the scriptures and the, the spirit is telling you, cleanse yourself. Cleanse yourself. Once you cleanse yourself, the promise is there. That you will become, become, you are not, you become. You will become a vessel of honor. And be used in the inner chamber to serve the master. Actually, no, those are not my words. The master is here. Useful to the master. Prepared for every good work. Church, I'm saying, we might have been serving in the large house for common things or dishonorable things. The Lord is calling us. The only key to, being, to, to, to serve as a vessel of honor is cleansing. Praise the Lord. Now, what is cleansing? Before I finish, what is cleansing? First John chapter 1, verse 7. Mm, I love this verse. First John chapter 1, verse 7. And you read up to 9. Who is there? Someone can read? Whoever has the microphone. Just read, Elvin. Elvin. First John chapter 1, <coughs> verse 7. But if we walk in the light... But. That means before that but, there are some not very good things. Before the but. So now start. Now, yes, now we can now start from but. <laughs> Elvin. But. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Uh -huh. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Mm -hmm. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. That is it. Again, I'm very specific with the version I'm using. Thank you, Elvin. My version says, 
Maybe it's close to what you are saying. Says, if we walk in the light, now, you walk in the light if the, the blood of Jesus, please, walk in the light, then the blood of Jesus. He says, if you walk in the light, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses, no, I, I'm very specific with my version, cleanses us from all sins. Praise the Lord. He goes ahead to say, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins. Again, he repeats, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you looking for cleansing? The answer is here. Walk in the light. He's not saying, get into the light because he's believing you already got, you believed. So you, you are already in the light. I mean, I mean, John chapter 3 has happened to you. You have believed. So you are in the light. He's not saying if you want to be cleansed, get into the light. No, he's not. Unless my version is different. He's saying, <laughs> walk in the light. That means you already got into light. Just walk in it. Don't deviate. Then if you do that, the blood of Jesus, and we say this, the blood of Jesus is as fresh as 2,000 years ago. It is as fresh. Actually, in the heavenly temple, before the Lord God, there is a lamp that's, that is slain there. It's just there. The lamp that was slain. The blood, just the same way there is water flowing on the altar in heaven, the same way the blood of the lamb that was slain flows and is fresh to death. How that happens, I do not know. I don't think I want to know. I've just believed. Praise the Lord. So, brethren, we are in light. Thank God. Now walk in the light. Walk in it. The more you walk in the light, the more the blood cleanses you, the more all unrighteousness is removed. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21 happens to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> he is faithful. That is the word. And I saw another cleansing that happens in John chapter 15 verse 3. So we've seen the blood of Jesus does the cleansing. Praise the Lord. The cleansing that Peter is referring, uh, that Paul is telling Timothy, is done by the blood. That one we have closed the chapter. So now that you are in the light, being in the light means you have believed the Son of God to be Lord over your life. Now, wh once you have believed, walk in the light. My question is, how do we know what is the light? Praise the Lord. Because there's light and darkness. Sometimes the, the line is, you might think the, light, the line is very thin. You can always find yourself in darkness. What is the light? Then I came to John chapter 15. He says, you are already clean, uh, cleansed because of the word I have spoken to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, take this. You are in the light. How you will know that you are walking in the light is by reading the scripture. There are no two ways about it. Study the scriptures do what the scripture says, it means you're walking in light. Anyone who obeys, the Lord says, <clears throat> anyone who obeys my commands is my friend. Do you think Jesus calling you his friend is easy? But it's as simple as obeying his commands. But where do you find his commands? In the word, in the scriptures, praise the Lord. So a believer who has come to the light, must study the scriptures because the scriptures are the living word of God. And I dare say, they are the living words of Christ. And if his words have cleansed the disciples, we are the disciples, praise the Lord. Then it means the more we digest and eat the scriptures, that means the more we are walking in there. And the more you walk in the light, what happens? The blood just cleanses you. Every single day of your life. 
Praise the Lord. I thought someone should be listening to something, or I'm still within time. <coughs> I'm within time, eh? <laughs> All right, I want to conclude. <laughs> uh, as Pastor Donga says, uh, I like Pastor Donga <coughs> so much. Not because we are the fans of the same team, <laughs> but because of how he puts things. I'm going to say there are so many things here, I'll skip some. I think that is what he says. <coughs> In Mark, now the Bible says, someone who has gotten into the light is walking in the light. That means they are studying and living the scriptures every day and they are being cleansed by the blood. Then now Mark 16, just happens to your life. Mark 16 says, <coughs> these signs, will accompany those who have believed in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly uh, stuff, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will get well. Now, just again, uh, contextual. He's not saying, the Bible is not saying he will. He says they. I don't know if you know the difference. In my name, they will. It's not in my name, he will or she will. It is they. That means one will hold the serpent, it will not bite him. One will go and lay hands, they will get healed. One will, will speak in tongues, and that's why I want, to, I want us to go in, in, in second, second Corinthians. It says Second Corinthians chapter 12, uh, first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to, eight, to 11. But to each, I'm emphasizing Mark 16. Praise the Lord, so that we don't leave it hanging. Mark 16, there are certain things that the Lord counts, and he says, they, those who believe, they. In 1 Corinthians 2, 7 to 11, he says, but to each, to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit, praise the Lord, for the common good to one. I'm emphasizing what I'm saying, that they in Mark. They means they. So Meshach here, one day he can get serpent or scorpion. Which one do you like touching? You'll get something dangerous. <laughs> and it will not bite you. They, Rev here, will walk, lay hands. People just get healed. Maybe, maybe a, a cooler. One day you can touch serpent, it bites you. It means you can lay hands and people get healed. I'm, I'm saying, may. You may lay hands. You cannot have them all. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's why I'm referring you to First, uh, first Corinthians, because it says to one is given uh, the word of knowledge. To one. So we can have Dr. here with word of knowledge. Praise the Lord. But prophecy, we come to, we, we come, this Mike looks like a prophet. Now, you come here to, to Mike, you get prophecy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm not saying you shave your hair. Uh, <laughs> Let's continue reading, even as I, I've said that several times. No, I've not said I'm concluding. I just, oh, thank you. <coughs> to another, the word of knowledge. To another, uh, understanding, according to the same spirit. To another, faith. This, this working faith. Uh, uh, this guy, Keegan, would tell you in our Bible study. There's the believing faith where you just believe. Then there's the wonder-working faith. Now, this is the faith we're talking about. One is given faith by the same spirit to another uh, gift of healing. I'm just saying they are distributed. They. Praise the Lord. So if you are given uh, the one for healing, and one day you step on a cockroach, no, one day you step on, on scorpion, no, I know a brother who we were singing, we were singing here last Sunday and he was beat by a bee. Where is that guy? Brains. Yeah, maybe brains, brain, he was beaten by a bee, he felt pain. But maybe he can he do some healing. That's what I'm saying. So if you are beaten by uh, Scorpio, don't say you are, you are not a believer. Don't say you are backslidden. No. There's one that is being, has been given to you and assigned to you by the Holy Spirit. <coughs> now, <laughs> I will not even illustrate. Let me read this. <coughs> 
Paul uses illustrations of a large house. I'm just recapping it uh, for the sake of uh, all of us so that we can go and take tea. Paul uses illustrations of, but maybe after this sermon you don't have to take tea. Paul uses the illustrations of a large house that has different kinds of vessels. The gold and silver vessels are kept clean so that they may be used for honorable purposes, such as dinner parties. I mentioned that, okay? The wood and earthenware vessels are used for dishonorable purposes, perhaps in the kitchen. Oh, by the way, maybe in the kitchen, but still in the same house. Kitchen is the same, in the same house. Or to carry out garbage or even human waste. Yes, dishonorable, I said it. They often get broken and are cheaply replaced. I mentioned it. This earthenware and uh, wood, praise the Lord. It would be easy to misapply Paul's point. Uh, uh, let me summarize this. If you took his illustration to its logical conclusion, you could say that dishonorable vessels serve a legitimate function. You might tend to think that Paul is saying, ah, even if they're just being used in the, used in the kitchen, but still they're in the same house, so it's still okay. We can just be used in the kitchen. We can be toilet tissues in the toilet paper. Eh? We can be toilet paper in the... It's still in the same house. No, that, that's not what Paul is saying. Because that will give you comfort. You say, I'm used for dishonorable things, but I'm in the same house. No, that's not what Paul is saying. He's saying, you could say that dishonorable vessels are legitimate function and thus, and thus are just as necessary as the gold vessels. But that is not his point. Rather, the large house represents the professing, I said it, professing church, praise the Lord, the visible church, church, some who associate with the church are truly born again. Take note. Others, such as false teachers, Himaneas, and Philetus, are probably not born again, or they are being used for other purposes. They are the vessels of dishonor. I, I think that one I already said. I'm just summarizing it. Paul is saying that no one should be a vessel for dishonor. Don't allow yourself to be a vessel of dishonor. Praise the Lord. In other words, he's saying that God isn't going to use a garbage pail, pail, he, no. Garbage pail life, eh? You see the garbage, the, the garbage is dirty. That's why cleansing is there. God is not going to use garbage pail <coughs> to serve pure gospel to hungry people. You must cleanse the dirt. I want to read Jeremiah as I conclude. Now this is real conclusion. Jeremiah chapter 1. Now actually I think I've just I've just consumed the food. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 1. Now, this is what most of us do. Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 1. <coughs> Jeremiah is called by God. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests, that were in Anathoth, okay, in the land of Benjamin. Yes. Yes. Proceed. The word of the Lord came to him in, a in the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. Mm -hmm. It also came throughout the days of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile. What, what, what are those words of the Lord? The word of the Lord came to me. I chose you before I formed you. God is speaking to Jeremiah. God is speaking to us today who are in his house. He's saying, before even you are conceived, the way my wife conceived Taliana, before, before conception, he already did what? Chose. But remember, he's telling Jeremiah these words. If I was told, I would just faint. But Jeremiah is not fainting. Jeremiah is arguing with God. I chose you before I formed you in the womb of in the womb. I set you up. Did you see uh, set apart here? I set you apart. I sanctified you before you were born. I appointed you a prophet, a servant, to be used to the nations. Yes, <laughs> this thing is delaying. Oh, he's, he's typing. Then Jeremiah says, "But I protested. You are here. You are born again. Praise the Lord." But you are fighting God. You are doing this, this thing. You are protesting. Oh no, Lord God. Look, I don't know how to speak. You are counting your weaknesses to the Lord. You are telling God, but you see. Look, I don't know how to speak since I am a youth. Or since I am a woman. Or since I am uh, what, short. Or since I am, you mentioned those things. 
Then the Lord said to me, do not say, I am a youth, for you will go to every, everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you. Now, if the Lord wants to use you, stop resisting. Praise the Lord. Stop Jonahing. Stop being Jonah. Is there? Yes. Don't be Jonah. Stop fighting God. You can't win. Praise the Lord. And if you've said yes to the Lord, call to serve, then help us to be blessed to be used in each other. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray?